Grace to you and peace from God our Creator, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Since tomorrow is Veterans Day, a lot of groups will be performing or singing the national anthem. And since we are veterans of the Lord, our walk is with Jesus. Amen. So if you were to write an anthem of your life's journey, what would it say? What would the lyrics of your personal anthem be? It might surprise you to know that my personal anthem is not Take Me Out to the Ball Game, <laughs> but rather some of the hymns that we sang this morning. Rock of Ages, which was indeed my dad's favorite. And It Is Well With My Soul, which is a favorite of mine. We could have also done Amazing Grace, or What a Friend We Have in Jesus, or How Great Thou Art, and that would please the lady who's in this little window over here. <laughs> but let's talk about our anthem in church for a moment. When we think of our New Testament lesson, we heard this morning that St. Paul wrote the following to the Thessalonican congregation. But we must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits of salvation through being made holy by the Holy Spirit and through belief in the truth. Because it's Veterans Day, I want to focus for a moment on our national anthem, which for many years was God Bless America. It wasn't until 1931 that the Star Spangled Banner was proclaimed our national anthem. And I don't know how much of the history of the Star Spangled Banner you know. It was written by an author and a poet named Francis Scott Key. And the occasion was an attack by the British troops on the city of Baltimore and the fort that was out in the harbor. The year was 1812. We had been independent as a nation for about 50 years. And then the British came back. They attacked our country, captured and burned the White House to the ground, and now had laid siege in the Baltimore Harbor to Fort McHenry. Key, as a reporter for a local newspaper, was on a boat out in the harbor, watching the bombardment as it went on through the night. And then in the morning, at the twilight's last gleaming, he saw that the American flag was still flying over the fort, and the British had called off the bombardment. Several hours later, Key had a chance to go ashore and was there for a prisoner exchange. And that's when he discovered how it was that the flag was still standing. He learned that during the night, a shell fragment had shattered the flagpole. And as the flag was falling, two soldiers rushed forward and lifted it up to hold it by hand. Because tradition says the flag never touches the soil. But another impact from a shell killed those two soldiers. Two more rushed forward to hold up the flag. So that by the time Key arrived the next morning, the flag was being supported by a little mound of soldiers who had died giving their life to keep the flag flying. For Key, it was an exhilarating, yet at the same time, terrifying sight. Despite the bombs and the explosions, the rocket's red glare, the American flag, tattered and torn, was still there. And so he wrote his song about that event, 
which years later became our national anthem. For us as Christians, it's our faith that brings us this far. And so if we're going to sing an anthem about ourselves, it's an anthem based on what God has done for us. This is a weekend when we talk about freedom. And I know I'm not the only one who has changed his Facebook profile picture to indicate freedom isn't free. Now, earlier this week, our school decided to honor its veterans. And so they had us all stand out there, and our names were called out, and our branch of service identified, and we were given a paper banner to hold up, and a t-shirt that said, Elsinore Veteran. I'm very proud to have that t-shirt that I will never wear. <coughs> Because on the back it says, once a soldier, always a soldier. <laughs> and that was my response. I started singing anchors away because I'm not a soldier, I'm a sailor. That's why I never sing Onward Christian Soldiers. <laughs> you, can, you can sing it, I'll sing Onward Christian Warriors. But the fact is that freedom isn't free. It's bought and paid for with a price. And the freedom that you and I have, not freedom from Great Britain, not freedom from any government, but freedom from our slavery to sin, freedom from that which would separate us from God and one another, is a freedom that was paid for by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, whom God sent into this world to be the price tag for our freedom. And that was a sacrifice he was willing to make for us. But as we say, that freedom must be bought over and over again. Now in our case, Jesus doesn't need to come back and die a second time. But rather we as followers of Christ must be willing to offer ourselves to other people so that they can hear the good news about what Jesus said. When I was a kid, and we would choose up sides to play whatever game it was that required more than one team, because I was older than a lot of the kids on my block, and in part because of my natural leadership ability, <laughs> I was always one of the team captains. But there was a young boy Sal Frangipani, who lived around the corner from me. Sal was not the most pleasant young man in the world. He had a bit of a lisp when he talked, and if truth be told, he sashayed a little bit when he walked, which at that time meant absolutely nothing to us other than the fact that nobody wanted to have Sal on their team. He was always the last one picked. In fact, sometimes when we had an odd number of people there, Sal wasn't picked at all. I know. And that bothered me, because I could see how upset and sad he was. So one day, I was team captain, and I chose Sal as my first choice. You should have seen him. He, he was all ready to be a superstar. He was the first pick. And if this was a Disney Pixar movie, we would come to the end of the game where the outcome was undetermined and Sal would be the one to score the winning points or runs that would lead our team to victory. The fact of the matter is, when crunch time came, Sal did have that opportunity, and he failed miserably. We were upset with him. That didn't take the smile off his face for one moment. He didn't care because he was the first chosen. Paul tells the Thessalonians, 
that God chose you. Now, we've all had times in our lives where we have felt troubled, where we have felt alone. And in those times, I want you to remember that God chose you. Amen. There are all times when you feel rejected or believe that the mistakes you have made will haunt you for the rest of your life. In those times, I want you to remember that God chose you. And so this morning, we're going to plant our flag, our flag of freedom. And in fact, we've got two of them on the wall behind me. One is for our nation, and the other is for our heavenly kingdom. I won't point you to the right ones. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, hey, parenthetically, I got in such trouble over at Eden Lutheran Church when I did the funeral for Becky, Isabella's grandma. Good goodness. Isabella's daughter. No, Isabella's daughter. Ophelia's grandma. Ophelia's daughter, Isabella's grandmother. Right. Because when I got there, their flags were backwards. They were in the wrong place. And being the upstart that I am, I moved them. <laughs> Later on, I got a phone call from Pastor Brown. Ken, do you know anything about the flags in our church being moved? I said, yes, I do. What happened? I moved them. They're always supposed to be, our flag is always over the speaker's right shoulder. And you had them reversed. So, I moved them. <laughs> well, do you think you might have called me first? Heck no. They were in the wrong place. I'm a sailor. I moved them. <laughs> you can say thank you now. <laughs> Once a scotch, always a scotch. <laughs> but this morning, as we observe Veterans Day weekend, we recognize that our God has chosen us. Now it takes strength to plant your flag. It takes courage to plant your flag. But plant it we will, because we will celebrate what God has done for us. And we must remember that through it all we give thanks that we are alive. I was telling Nancy a story this morning. And I'm going to save her for another time. Never mind. I'm not going to tell that story. This is so well organized. For Key, the flag and its anthem represented hope. For us, it's our gospel message. That God cared enough for you to choose you. And though our earth be troubled, our cross still stands. Though the mountains tumble, our cross still stands. Despite our sin, the cross still stands. And on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 Ladies.